Yeah, I'll react to that, sure. Hey guys, uh, my hair was poofy, so I put water in it. Oh. Let's do this. Or original link to the video from British Pathé. Or Path. Preemptive link. Let's learn. Or let's watch. King George the Sixth and Queen Elizabeth, the Queen Mother, visit America in 1939. Uh, before the start of World War II? When did World War II start in th 1939? Oh, it was September 2nd, was it, wasn't it? Yep, September 2nd. September 1st. So, like, right near my birthday. Which is coming up. W where was I? What? Right here. Let's go. This is the Gomont British News, presenting the world to the world. of Niagara thunder between Canada and the United States, but that is the Never only been. frontier barrier between our great dominion and its neighboring republic. On this never-to-be-forgotten occasion when our king and queen paid the first state visit to America, the friendship of the two peoples was welded even more firmly than before. In proof, let our American commentator tell you the story of it as he told it to America. History is made at the nation's capital. Their Majesties, George and Elizabeth, first reigning British sovereigns to step on U.S. soil, are met really? by Secretary of State Hull, who extended the first official greeting to them at the border. Now the rulers of the world's mightiest empire go to be welcomed by the heads of the world's greatest republic. For the occasion, His Majesty wears the uniform of Lord High Admiral of the Fleet. Meeting of the President and King. First Lady and the Queen. Mr. Roosevelt says, welcome. At last I greet you. The King replies, Mr. President, it is indeed a pleasure for Her Majesty and myself to be here. Um, it looks almost disrespectful how he's standing, uh, FDR, but you can tell how he's like in his braces, you know? This is 1939, so definitely, like, he, he can't really move much, and you see him like... Like this, like that, that's that's like him. He's basically being held up by braces, I think, under mm -hmm. under his it suits. Is indeed, a pleasure for her Majesty and myself to be here. Line up for the reception. The nation's highest officials are presented. Headed by Vice President and Mrs. Garner, they include the Bankheads, Morgenthaus, Woodrings, and other cabinet members, as well as federal dignitaries. And it's all quite, quite American style. The Britisher's turn is heralded by curtsies. Ambassador Lindsay presents the embassy and legation staff to the rulers, who are technically here not as the King and Queen of England, but King and Queen of Canada. Oh. And then Washington's public hails the King. When did Canada stop? Beginning four being busy days, the president and the king going car number one. 1951 is when they stopped being a dominion. Okay. Beginning four busy days, the president and the king going car number one. And they seem in high good humor as they start the royal round of ceremonials. Mrs. Roosevelt and the Queen, who's partial to a parasol in the 90-degree heat, are in car number two. Both wear blue wool dresses, the gift of British and American wool growers. Processional. Behind a wool dresses in 90-degree heat? A clattering military escort, the cortege swings towards the capital. Soon 
historic Pennsylvania Avenue resounds with cheers at the news, the British are coming. A mighty array of war tanks now leads the way, and a delirious 600,000 line the route from British the Capitol to the White House. The King seems to be thoroughly at ease. He and the President chat like old friends. Wonder what they're discussing so earnestly. Don't they need a translator? How can they talk? Wonder what that was a bad attempt at a joke. I forget it. They're discussing so Am earnestly. American. Never mind. <laughs> Royal reception. It almost looked like she was flicking them off for a second. <laughs> this is the Royal reception for the great, great, great grandson of George the Third, as he rides with Washington's thirty-first successor over the route British troops took in 1814 to burn the White House. The hostility of 125 years ago has become heartwarming friendship. So this is 1939, 85 years ago. So that was actually now 210 years ago. Still looks like she's flicking him up. I'd be honored. That's a lot of horse amity with a capital A. International amity with a capital A. Amity. Next to a lighter side of the royal visit, the much talked about garden party at the British Embassy. The social event of social events. It's a red letter day for Ambassador and Lady Lindsay and 1400 of America's elect and elite. Morgan's on hand for a spot of tea with the king. JP Morgan. He's an old friend of the royal family. There he is. Their right? majesties mingle with grade A delegation from the social register who's... That guy's super rich. That's him, right? The royal family. Their majesties mingle with grade A delegation from the social register who's who and the congressional directory. Everybody's in his best bib and tucker and the queen's radiant in a gown of white organza with panels of white lace. or no royalty, it looks very much like a lawn sociable. And as the folks back on Main Street say, a good time was had by all. So that was the Washington welcome. Later, the President's yacht took our King and Queen down the Potomac River to Mount Vernon, to the tomb of George Washington. His Majesty laid a wreath upon the simple grave of the first President, and afterwards, with the Queen, made a tour of the home of the most famous American. Mount Vernon. That was really nice. America's present-day government was honored in the... So the great-great-great-grandson of... George the Third, who is the enemy of our George, is laying laying, laying laying a wreath on George's tomb, which is just incredible. America's present day government was honored in the great building of the Washington Capitol. Where they hey, watch them. Don't let them light it on fire. This is what okay. another fervent greeting. I had to. And inside the great building of America's Parliament, congressmen met the King and Queen. You know I've been reacting to a lot of videos in a day when, um, like it's almost 9 p.m. when I'm blinking a lot because my eyes are so dry from looking at the screen. And inside the great building of America's Parliament, congressmen met the King and Queen. 
Later, the link that was forged between the two nations in battle over 20 years ago was remembered at Arlington Cemetery when the king laid a wreath upon the tomb of the unknown warrior, the soldier from over there who laid down his life in France. by the King and Queen in Washington had preceded them to New York. And although the actual landing ceremony was unexpectedly simple for Manhattan, it was the slightly shy official welcome of the greatest city in the New World for welcome visitors from the greatest of the old. These pictures were flown across the Atlantic and establish a new record in the time between an event in New York and its presentation in Britain. But a fuller account will appear in later editions of Gaumont British News. Their Majesties were met by Mayor LaGuardia. Mayor LaGuardia, is that, I'm assuming, where what LaGuardia Airport is named after? Who? Who it's named after? The King and Queen drove through New York. In front of them in the car were Mayor LaGuardia and New York's Governor Lehman. How wide the street is. So they came to the World's Fair. Here again, their simplicity and charm conquered the American hearts. They have left behind them a better appreciation of the problems of the British Empire. They have created an understanding of far greater value than any modern pact. That was great. I enjoyed that a lot. I was going to just watch it on my own, but I'm glad I recorded it, reacted to it. Um, love y'all. Hope you're all doing well. Would appreciate any comments down below. And uh, hopefully I'll see you next video. Bye, guys.